Hello everyone, welcome back to the Daily Wrap. Well, it's team naming day and we've actually got a lot more news than normal because the Uruguay game is coming up this weekend and Michael Checker has taken the chance to name 12 changes to his starting team. Now, if we said them all, we'd be here all day. So, Beth, highlights. I think the number one highlight is Jordan Pataira is finally going to make his Wallabies debut. It's a weird thing to think. I mean, he's only 19, but just shy of a year ago, he could have been making that debut against Italy um, on the spring tour. But a hamstring injury obviously cost him that chance. And now here we are, and he's going to become the youngest Australian ever to play in a Rugby World Cup. And I think there are plenty of people over here and also at home who are really excited to see what he can do. They sure are. There's only been a handful of people who've made debuts at a World Cup. Michael Checker was asked about what makes him so special and, and he said some nice things but he also said something really interesting which was uh, Jordi Pataille's story is yet to be written. Uh, all the great stuff is still to come from Jordan Pataille. I thought that was a really nice line from Michael Checker. He's a very good player mate and his, his story is yet to be told. You know, There's no point tell, talking stories about him now because he's, he's just starting and he's, he's, he's going to tell his own story on the field over this game and I'd imagine many games to come going forward so um, I'm excited to, to watch him play on the weekend in his debut and I'm sure his family would be very proud of him. He's one of those guys with a, a very old head on young shoulders so um, other changes Beth, your 9 and 10 has changed, there's a, a bunch of changes in the forward pack, where are we looking? Yeah, the front row, I think um, a really interesting one in that James Slipper and Flau Fayanga come into that front row and, and Michael Checker made an interesting point speaking today. That's kind of that Brumby's core, so yeah. while there are changes, they're actually really familiar with, with each Alan other. With Alan Alalatoa yeah, of course. still in the, in the team there as well. Um, some back row changes, Jack Dempsey's in, uh, Lucan Salakai Loto is in as well. Michael Hooper's still there to captain the team. Yeah, I think you'd be uh, facing a bit of a fight if you tried to get Michael Hooper to rotate out of a game, particularly a game as, as important as this one. But um, yeah, Luke Hahn and, and Jack in there, expect to see a little bit more ball running and some, you know, some big collisions um, this weekend from them. Here you go, we're almost running through them all. Nick White and uh, is back at number nine, Christian Leilofano at 10, and Matt Tamura at 12. And he said he's actually viewing this, he's, he doesn't mind the utility tag, but he's actually viewing this as an opportunity to show Michael Checker what he can do and maybe stick his hand up for that number 10 jersey as well. You know, my goal is always to get in the starting spot. Um, someone who's done a well, good job at locking down that 12 spot. So, um, yeah, look, there, there is, and I, as I said, there's... Um, because of the way we play, I think you know it, it might be a bit different that auditioning with the number 12 on the bat um, for a 10 jersey, but I think it's still very much relevant. So um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Um, hopefully, I can put a good performance together and, and push my case forward. I guess. And Tamu was in good form today, actually, Beth. He uh, held court at the press conference a little bit. He was also asked about the Indigenous jersey, which they're going to be wearing today, uh, wearing against Uruguay, pardon me, on the weekend. Um, it's the alternate jersey to the Indigenous jersey we've seen before. Yeah, it's predominantly a green jersey. And um, and you mentioned Matt Tamu talking about it today. He made a really good point that while obviously it is a reflection of the Indigenous people and, and that um, element of it, but it's also a, a reflection of the multicultural nature of Australia, but also this Wallabies team. And he spoke really well about that today. Yeah, let's have a listen to that. It's probably a lot bigger than we realise, I think, for a lot of people. Um, and I think it's, you know, it's a recognition of quite a few things where we're moving as a society. And I think that's quite exciting. Um, Obviously, the the makeup of the the Wallabies team in itself is a lot different now culturally than it was say 10 years ago. Um, so getting little things like this and um, yeah, whilst whilst it's just a different jersey, I think it, it, it means a lot to a lot of people back at home. And um, to be a part of that is actually pretty cool to be honest with you. It's something that um, I know I'm very proud of in terms of rugby um, being one of those teams or what you know used as a vehicle to try and um, yeah get a bit of change there, which is uh, which is nice. So the only other interesting thing for me, Beth, is Taniela Tupo still on the bench. I think we're going to see a little bit of uh, exploding rhino coming out of that bench. He's going to be all fired up when he gets eventually gets on the field. He hasn't had a run yet. No, it's, uh, Czech's been very quick to, to keep the same sort of combinations in the front row. So, yeah, he'll be uh, ready to go for sure on Saturday. OK, so th as we said yesterday, there was also a little bit of Waratah's news up here in Tokyo today. Rob Penny was unveiled to the press, uh, former... Canterbury coach, a former Munster coach who's been up here coaching in Japan and the Waratahs have uh, I guess a bunch of changes to make, they've got generational change coming through that squad and he's very keen to try and promote homegrown talent, particularly in that say 10 channel, he did say that he wanted 
people to be patient because the likes of Will Harrison and Ben Donaldson, it's going to take some time for them to come through. Yeah, I think that was a surprise. Most people would have thought a new coach coming to the Waratahs would have been straight at looking for a new 10 to kind of help those guys come through with um, Bernard Foley obviously going to Japan. But yeah, he's, he's keen to keep things local. And also from a coaching perspective, still um, that assistant coach to be appointed. And, and he made a, a really strong point of saying it was going to be an Australian appointment. So yeah. watch out for that in the next couple of weeks. And so the Wallabies finally leave Tokyo. They head down to Oito tomorrow, Beth, ahead of that game in Uruguay. It's a travel day, and we'll be having a travel day as well, so we won't be bringing you daily wrap tomorrow. We'll jump straight forward and see you uh, next time on Rugby Nation on Friday.